Welcome in Braves Today, bravestoday.com. He's Daryl Daprich. He's a new face. I know you you see him there and you're going, no, that's not the guy that's usually on there. He's better looking than Lindsey probably. Uh, <laughs> Lindsey's going to absolutely love the fact that I said that. Uh, but want to do a little something different is, uh, you know, we always have me and Lindsey on or me and Zach on or Zach and Lindsey or it's always Braves related. Daryl, however, is a Pirates fan and even worked for the Pirates organization at one point in time. And just to kind of recap the series, I thought I'd bring Daryl on and let him talk about it from a Pirates aspect, and uh, one of which has got to state the obvious split, uh, a four-game series, which there's not many of this year, but a four-game series, and uh, Braves and Pirates split. Uh, Pirates get the book in as they get games one and four. Braves take games two and three. Saw great things out of both teams, in my opinion, as far as the plate was concerned. Also saw horrific things out of both teams as far as the mound was concerned. Uh, for a Braves fan, you need to be concerned with the starting pitching. Uh, they gave up way too many runs to the Pirates, especially when this was the meat of your team. Uh, you know, Freed, you kind of expect, even though he gave up some runs, you still expect him not to do great the first few times out. He had a great start. He he was well above what he should have done his last time out. And so he's probably more realistic as far as what we saw this time out. Uh, but the other guys, when you start talking, you know, about Bryce Elder, this is, this is his second game in a row where he hasn't done great. He hasn't really pitched well at all after the All-Star break. Does he need rest? Does he need a reset? I don't know what needs to happen. So, uh, Daryl, as far as you Pirates fan, you got to be pretty excited about it. You're talking about a club that is is more towards the bottom of the division than, than the top like the Braves are. So, uh, they really – it's not like they were playing to have a playoff spot as far as, no. they, or as far as this week was concerned. No, they've won 11 of their last 20. And I'll just say this, you know, early on in the year – the Pirates were like overachieving. They were in first place through May, early June. People were getting really excited. And then they faltered in June and July. They really struggled and um, sold at the, at the deadline, did not buy, and picked up some players that actually helped the Pirates in this series. Some pitching that did. Rivas, the first baseman, really kind of helped. But I think going into this series, any Pirate fan that was level-headed, and this is how far this once-proud franchise has fallen, the split feels like a freaking sweep, and that's yep. sad. I mean, I'm tired of the whole, you know, participation, stay strong, moral victory. You know, I was even reading some stuff yesterday when the Pirates basically had have dropped two or three in the series. Some local beat writers talking about how what a great series it was, and the young guys were playing well, and look at all the runs they're scoring. You know, it's frustrating for somebody that's been a fan as long as I have. This isn't upwards basketball. You don't get it's, – it's, it's not about being moral victories. They blew a game that I was very frustrated with their mm -hmm. all-star closer, who we've nicknamed Six Flags because every time he takes them out, it's like a thrill ride now. He shouldn't be doing that. He's an all-star caliber closer. A lot of people came after him at the deadline. Close games. Blew a six-run lead in game one. Even though they won it, it's still the Braves came back. So – all in all, looking at the totality of this series, you have got to be thrilled if you're a Pirate fan to get out of there with the split. Because I had talked to a good friend of mine who's a big Braves guy, former college baseball player, and I said, look, if the Pirates can get one of these four against the best team in baseball playing these young kids, I think you come away um, a little bit satisfied. And then the way they played, they, they did play close. This was a, a slugging series. It was old school. It reminded me of 70s baseball, you know, high scoring, a lot of hits, nothing like we've seen with the Braves in the 90s and their pitching staff. So the bats came alive, which surprises me. And I think you make a great point coming out of this in your intro. Is that something that Pirate fans should be excited about, that the young guys are starting to hit? Or is that more of an indictment upon Braves pitching? that the bats came alive. So all in all, you take it, you, you get the split again, 11 of their last 20. This is a series and this is a, a history between these two teams that pirate fans know a lot of heartbreak, even in the regular season when they play the Braves. So I think you're happy. If you're a pirate fan, you're, you're not panicking or you're not concerned. If you're a Braves fan, you just want to get some things cleaned up as you start to go down the stretch, the dog days and get into the postseason. Yeah, and starting with game one, Acuna, he was 0 for 5. That always is, is huge. I mean, he sets the tone for the Braves offense. I don't care what people say. Uh, when he has a, a, a two-hit game, even if he starts out the game with a single, much less even a home run like he did later in the series, uh, he just for some reason sets the pace for the entire offense when he does that. So when he goes 0 for 5, 
so goes the rest of the offense. And then it didn't help Strider out there. He struggles again and uh, over the span of just uh, – it, it's just this one inning. He can't get this one inning out of his system. So he only lasts two and two-thirds. He gave up six earned runs and only three strikeouts. That's the lowest strikeout total all season long. And his ERA just during the game jumped from 361 to a 394. And speaking of his ERA, over the last five starts, he's he's jumped uh, just over five starts. It's, it's a 5.86. So I'm not sure if it's rest. I'm not sure if it's mechanics. I'm not sure if it's timing. Uh, of course, the Bucks take it 7-6 and, and uh, three straight losses for the Braves. So as a Braves fan, I will say, getting the next two games was absolutely huge for – Braves fan as, as well as the morale for the for the locker room and for the dugout and for the clubhouse and I say that just because coming off getting beat by the Cubs you know you're in the middle of a 10 game road series it's going to continue going to New York for the weekend and then you lose that first game to the Pirates who you just said it let's just call it what it is they're not in the best shape right now as far as you know, that's the team coming off losses that's what you were you should have been licking your chops we're going to Pittsburgh they're not doing great. They have won out of the last 20. As you said, now it's 11 out of 20. But at the time, it wasn't 11 out of 20. And uh, and so um, you got to be thinking, all right, Braves. And you got Strider coming. You got Elder that's going to be going to the mound. You got Freed that's going to be going to the mound. So Braves fans have got to be sitting there going, all right, this is a chance. As you just said, if you could get one or four, the Braves, Braves fan, we were talking, we need three or four. That's yeah. that, we, It was the same mindset with us. And, and, could we get lucky and grab a sweep? It's tough to sweep a four game series uh, with anybody, even if you're playing the last place the team in the in in the uh, in the league. But um, it, that that game one, it looked pitiful and kind of thought that the Braves were on their last, you know, their last breath. And it had to be uplifting, like you said, in game one for the Pirates to pull away and grab that win at the end. Yeah, I think a couple different games within the games. First of all, when you're a Pirate fan and the Pirate coaching staff, and you look at this four game series. Right out of the gate, you say you see Strider going in game one, and you're like, well, I mean, I hate to say it, they're realists. I mean, baseball people are realists, and they know. And it's like, well, you know, Strider's tough. You drop that one, you got to get into games two and three. So when the Pirates got that one out of the way, it was almost like they were playing with house money at that point. Mm -hmm. You don't expect to beat Strider game one. You just don't. But here's what I saw. When the Pirates went up 6 nothing. And the Braves came back to make it a close game, even though the Pirates won it. I, I was talking to some family members in Pittsburgh and said, get ready, the Braves are going to win the next two. That comeback, although they did not win that game, I think springboarded them to get momentum rolling, bats rolling, confidence. And you saw it just carry over to games two and three. And even though they blew a, a, a four-run lead in one of those games, which was so weird how many back-and-forth you know lead changes was. there was, I think you saw that springboard them. And if you're a Pirate fan, you're like, oh, we, we wanted to get one at least in this series, and we get it beating Strider. Everything else, and especially today, coming back from 4 nothing was just bonus money. I mean, I, I think that and, and it's there's part of that's a, an indictment about where this Pittsburgh Pirate, you know, team is mm -hmm. and where this 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 whole system is. Uh, they got a lot of young kids, but you you would hope that when you walk out of a series and you split at home, they're not acting like they won the World Series. And I hope that they're toning that down a little bit because it's a split hmm. and it's at home. Now it is against the best team of baseball, right? But you've got, I mean, you, you, I know you got to temper expectations, but again, I just think Pirate fans are frustrated with the expectation, the bar that's been set, that kind of thing. At some point, you've got to start emulating. And following what the Braves did three or four years ago when they blew it up and then you saw marked improvement mm -hmm. and upward trajectory every year, playing the kids and that kind of thing. So I hope the Pirates use this as a, a launching pad or a, a base point and go, okay, we can be good, but let's try to – I mean, there's no reason why they can't play good baseball through August and September and try to at least, you know, have a winning record. So I look yeah. at it. They're, they're only nine games under 500. Get rolling. Yeah, that's exactly it. Is that now you got to find a different, you got to set your goals differently than what you did before. It's because, you know, not talking playoffs, but maybe a winning record. We're talking about, I was talking about Acuna in game one being 0 for 5. Well, welcome to the show in game two as he leads off with a home run, a 448 foot bomb uh, to put the Braves up one to nothing. Now he's at 26 
and uh, 53 stolen bases. That went to 55 after today. He was able to get a couple of more late in the game uh, after uh, only having a hit. On pace right now, 38 home runs and 77 stolen bases. Uh, that 77 is probably – that pace is probably higher now since he got two today. Uh, exited the game, though. Got hit in the pad of his elbow. You know, I said this to some of my buddies that I was texting saying notes. I don't know if he's just fragile or he's being over, he's overcompensating when he gets hit or when he lands wrong because he's had so many injuries leading up to this year that it freaked him out when he got hit. Because even though it got hit, because the, they showed it over and over in slow motion and it, it looked like the pad took the brunt of it. And I couldn't think that it hurt that bad but they actually gave him x-rays so i don't know if it's over precaution i understand he's your all-star i understand that he's the face of the franchise right now however at some point in time some of these little he's been yanked out of the game a couple of times this year on plays that just didn't look like they should yank him out of the game so yeah, it, it looks I, like load management to me which is really strange i mean mm -hmm. to use an nba term i think they want him so healthy and so revving and raring to go for the playoffs that they're just not taking any chances because of how elite he is. I, the pitch that Holderman threw, and Holderman throws very hard. He yeah. throws a heavy sinker. It, it's one of those balls that, you know, when it hits you, it hurts because it's it's got a lot of sink to it, but it's heavy. It's heavy when you hit it. It's heavy when you hit it into the ground. That pitch wasn't even close, though, as far as if it got away from him. I yeah. mean, it was not even in the inside corner. Okuna didn't lunge or, you know, dive into the baseball. So, I don't know. I, it, it's it's interesting. I, I will tell you this. The ball he hit out of PNC Park, it's not a hitter-friendly park, friendly park. It, it's just not. It, 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 to right field it is. If you, you know, the Clemente wall, if you're a left-hander, but if you're a right-hander where the rotunda is and all that and that notch, they call it the north side notch in left center, you've got to, especially when it gets humid in the summer, you got to really – drive the baseball and hit that thing about 450 just amazing i mean that yeah. was that was yeah, an it, absolute bomb it got out of there in a hurry i mean everybody knew it when it left the bat i mean and, and to start the game starts the fireworks pitching also a problem um torinos went five innings seven hits six runs all earned again another outing by a braves pitcher with six earned runs or more uh, Olsen, some bright spots, did get his 100th RBI, so uh, that tied a franchise record in doing it, doing so in, in 11 games. Forrest Wall finally got to play. It was because of Ronnie's injury that it was able to do that. And uh, they just kind of went back and forth. And then Pilar, his postgame interview said everything is he admitted, I don't know if this was a shot at the clubhouse or a shot at the coaching staff, but he admitted he, he would like more consistency. He was able to get that, uh, that winning hit in the top of the ninth. Uh, that, that allowed the Braves to, after they had the lead and then it gave up the lead and then was able to come back. And uh, it, it, if they, I'm wondering what you said, if the Braves had not come back and put six on the board in game one, would they have even had the wherewithal to think when it got to the eighth and ninth inning, hey, we still got a chance to make a push here, especially with, I know you call him six flags, but that he clearly, amongst other teams, including the players, because Pilar said that too, one of the best closers in baseball. Yeah, that's a good point. If, if you don't get that six runs in game one, do you come into game two down late against the all-star closer and have the confidence and belief to get it done against him? Now, again, baseball people are smart, and Bednar's been struggling. His last week and a half of the Pirates, he's blown two saves. And even the saves, like in Milwaukee, the last game of the series, it was, it was you know, roller coaster time. It was, it was, very, it was very adventurous. So, Scouts know that when they analyze stuff, I don't know. He, his stuff looks good. He's still throwing in the upper 90s. I don't know if it looks flat. But when you get a guy like Lopez, Nick Lopez for the Braves, that comes in and gets a big hit, and th that belief system is just going to carry over. And I, at that point, I'm thinking, okay, they're going to win the next three going away, and especially as we'll talk about later in game four when they get up 4 nothing. But, yeah, that, that I think propelled them to have the belief that even though Bednar is a all-star closer, we can get runs off of him, and they did. And that was, a, in my opinion, a really nice win for the Braves and tough to swallow for the Pirates when you are when you blow a lead like that late. And, again, you're supposed to have your all-star closer on the mound. 
Before we get to game three and talk more about that, of course, the Braves uh, win that game two. Um, you know, they're then able to come back and do so. Uh, Braves fans, got to tell you, a new sponsor for the Braves today, and they are based in Atlanta. Huge Braves fans as well, just like we are. Ford Stokes, founder and president of Active Wealth, host of Active Wealth Show at AM 920, the answer and author of the incredible book, Annuity 360, wants to give each and every Braves fan an amazing gift, his book for free, Annuity 360, all for free. So all you got to do is go to annuity360.net. That's annuity360.net. Submit that contact information. You'll get that complimentary copy of Ford's book. I should mention Ford and his team specializes in pre-retirees and retirees ready to invest. They have the expertise to ensure your wealth is well protected and positioned for growth. Ford and his team at Active Wealth are there to help. By the way, Ford's registered investment advisor, Brookstone Capital Management, over $8.5 billion in assets. Find out more about Active Wealth at their website, activewealth.com. And if you want to catch up on any of Ford's financial radio shows, you can listen to them anytime at activewealthshow.com. Trust me, you don't want to miss out on the valuable insights Ford provides. Active Wealth Management, multiple offices in Alpharetta. Cartersville, as well as Kennesaw, Midtown, and just opened up a new headquarters off exit 12, Georgia 400. They are close to home. Let them know that all of us at Braves today sent you in that direction to tell Ford we said hello. Daryl, we move on to game three. And uh, Arcia, it, two people stood out in this game to me. Uh, that was Orlando from the plate, Orlando Arcia for the Braves. And then as far as your Pirates are concerned, I can tell you right now that the Hayes kid, the third baseman, was a Braves killer throughout the entire series, and he really picked it up on games three and four. Yeah, Key Brian Hayes, son of former major leaguer Charlie Hayes, Braves and Phillies, uh, notoriety there. Key Brian Hayes was a supplemental pick in the draft in the first round. Pirates loved him. They love his glove. They feel like he's a future gold glover. He is very, very smooth and very electric in the field. The problem with him is he came on like game busters his first 30 or 40 games, and it may have been the COVID year, and he hit home runs. He hit close to 400 in that short sample uh, you know, season that it was, and then he got bit by the injury bug and can't stay on the field. I mean, he literally hit back, you know, shoulder. He, he, he struggled. He had a, ha a hamate injury to his hand, swinging the bat, mm -hmm. opening day. It leads off the game with the home run, and then later in the year, a couple years ago, later in the game, hurts his hand. So a lot of Pirate fans are frustrated with him because they see flashes, but they feel like he's a little fragile, and they want to see him on the field for 130 games, 120 games, because he does have a great glove. I don't think he'll ever hit for power. I think he's a guy that probably hit between 10 and 15. That's his ceiling. But he's fast. He's got a quick bat. He can go the other way. He's a kid, in my opinion – that gets kind of, I don't know, forecasted as a 275, 280 guy, can hit 15 home runs, drive in 70, but win a gold glove. And I think he needs to stay on the field. It's very simple. When him and Brian Reynolds hit, I don't care what anybody else on the Pirates is doing around them, whether it's Henry Davis or Andy Rodriguez, any of these young kids they've called up, Pagaro, when Reynolds and um, Hayes are hitting mm – -hmm. They, they, they win games. They win series. And Kutch, McCutcheon, has just kind of come along as a, as a bonus. I mean, he's had a really good year. So they need him on the field. They need him healthy. And they need him to show what he showed when he came into the league the first year. And Pirate fans have been very frustrated with him. But he ended up nine RBIs in this series. So he really helped carry them in this series. The Braves left a lot of runners on base, including game three. Just Murphy alone, the catcher, left six on base at one point in time, uh, just with him being at the plate because he came up twice with the bases loaded. I'm not sure what the total was on him before it was all said and done with. However, uh, the big moment came uh, late in the game. Michael Harris, the second, tags up on a ball that's hit that gets called off. Everybody, even this was said in post game by Michael Harris, the second. This is, this is, this is you as a Pirates fan. This is why y'all are frustrated because – the second baseman takes that ball. His momentum's going towards the outfield. So Harris is able to tag and score on the go-ahead run before they bring in. Even though I talk bad about him, Iglesias has had a few good outings as of late. And and actually, uh, the stats were thrown at me about what all he's done and shut people down towards the end of the All-Star break and then coming out of the All-Star break is he's been untouchable. So that's what the Pirates are going to face. The right field is right there. Why do you not let him take that ball with this momentum going to the – Harris is not even thinking of tagging if the right fielder makes that play. He said that in, in the postgame. Yeah. He said, as soon as I saw the second baseman reach up, he said, 
Washington, he said, Wash was telling me, fake it, fake it. And he said, but when I saw the second baseman was going to catch it, I was not faking it after that. He said, I was going to go and chance the fact that he couldn't stop, plant, put good power on the throat of the plate, and make a perfect throw. And he was right. He guessed right. Yeah, Triolo, who was the second baseman rookie, made a mistake, backpedaling, makes the catch. Henry Davis is playing right field, the number one overall pick a few years ago, played catcher in college at Louisville, but has a cannon for an arm, Ben, a great throwing arm. He catches that moving forward like everybody learns fundamentals, even in high school baseball, so your momentum's carrying you forward. It's not even – Harris, like you said, stays right there. This is the little – things that in sample sizes are little things under the microscope that Pirate fans, in game one, it almost cost the Pirates from adding another run because the Braves scored one late when I, I, there was a runner on second, and he gets picked off. Mm. Um, I can't remember who was pitching for the Braves. He was a lefty. Makes a, you know just a routine, leg goes up, spins around, and picks him off at third base, and you're going. Oh, yeah, it was, yeah, it was when Yates was in. Yep, I remember. Yeah, that. And, yep. and you're going. That's a big run. I mean, that could have been a difference between the Braves tying it up later in the game and the Pirates hold it on by a run. It's little fundamentals, and the thing that bothers me is I don't think they have a manager that holds them accountable to those little fundamentals. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know what goes on behind closed doors, but I know that like when uh, the the first baseman uh, Will Craig. For the Pirates two years ago, the thing that was all over ESPN when Javi Baez duped him and, and scored, <laughs> the, 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 you know, it was like the biggest blooper in baseball history. I mean, I don't even, he didn't even, I would have sat him the next game. Castro last year sliding into third and his cell phone comes out. He plays him the next game. I, it drive, I'm old school, I'm a traditionalist, yeah. but that kind of stuff. Jim Leland would have absolutely went ballistic. I think oh, Snickers yeah. the kind of manager that would handle that stuff. I don't even care if it's handled in house. Sit him the next game. Yeah. But those little fundamental brain dead plays, I get Tri Triolo and and uh, Davis being rookies. But again, that any level of baseball, that's a fundamental. You don't have to be a major leaguer to say, well, he's a rookie. If you are in a ball, the right fielder gets that ball moving forward. Those things are frustrating, and there seems to be no accountability when players make those type of boneheaded mistakes. I said that uh, when, it, when, especially post game interview, and, and you heard um, Harris say that uh, Michael Harris the second say that as he said, you know, we all learned in little league that the outfielder is supposed to call off the infielder, and he said, and he wasn't doing it. He said, so that just made my decision for me whenever that was taking place. So, yeah. uh, Braves start fast again in game four, get a couple in the first and second innings, and uh, Olsen uh, gets his 40th home run of the season in the, in the third, capped off with an Ozuna double that played at Darno, who uh, they you think they're cruising, they're up to a four nothing lead. And what do you know? Here come the Pirates after that, as Bryce Elder again, like Spencer Strider, has done has his meltdown, and he only goes five, gives up six hits, five runs. Didn't give up the six runs like everybody else did, but still gave up five runs, all of which were earned. So pitching still an issue for the Braves, but you got to appreciate the fight out of the Pirates. Uh, after easy to go down four to nothing against a first-place team like the Braves and just kind of mail it in for the day. Yeah, that's a great point. I, that's the one thing in this series, because, again, I'm not into moral victories. I'm just not – but the one thing in this series that I saw that actually, you know, equated to two wins, so it, it ended up being really uh, positive, is no matter what happened, there was never they never folded their tents. They never quit, which is what they're supposed to do. But mm. I think that the, the, the ability to be resilient and keep coming back against the best team in baseball and their young kids, and some of these young kids are the one that stepped up and, and did this. I mean, they traded Santana and Choi. McCutcheon didn't have a, a good series. It was the young guys, Reynolds, Hayes, Pagaro, Davis. These kids, I think this series will help them in the long run the rest of the year with the way they show the resiliency to keep battling back. Felt like they were never out of ball games and kept swinging the bats because the bats have been brutal the last month and a half. So if you kind of – you know how it is, man. It's contagious. They start hitting the ball a little bit. Now in these series when they go and get Milwaukee in here and – you know, go on the road after after the, the next homestand, I think that this will help them from a confidence standpoint. But I tell you, I, I would be very, very um, – if I'm, I feel like the Braves are really excited and chomping at the bit for the Pirates 
to come to, to, to true as far. I mean, to come to Atlanta. I, I just have a feeling that that series, they're not happy with getting out of there with the split. And I think that's going to show uh, later on when they play in Atlanta. Yeah, they're not. I don't think that they're happy at all right now with the way they've done on the road. Uh, that that was how they started the year. That was the only place they could win on the road. Now it's completely. It's almost like that has switched. It's been tough to win on the road for the Braves. They're going to be on the road to stay that way. Uh, seven five the final in in the fourth game in the split of the series. The Braves now head to New York, take on the Yankees before coming back home to Truist and taking on the or, or take on the Mets in New York and then take on the Yankees at Truist next week and in interleague play again. So. Uh, Glad that you came on, Daryl. I'm so so happy we got the chance to talk. As soon as man. as soon as I saw we were playing the Pirates, I was like, man, I got to get this guy on. We got to talk some Pirates stuff but, because uh, usually it's all soaked in, in Braves Braves gear around here. Well, I appreciate it. This has been fun. I love baseball. Uh, this is a great podcast. I really enjoyed this, and it was just fun to talk baseball in the middle of the afternoon. Really enjoyed it. <laughs> yeah, instead of instead of doing work, we get to do this instead. It's pretty cool. Amen. Thing. <laughs> yes. Braves head to New York next. He's Daryl Daprich. I'm Ben Taylor. Thank you guys for listening. Braves today. Braves underscore today on Twitter. Bravestoday.com is where you find all of the written.